Hi, Svetlina, Claire. Thank you both very much for agreeing to be interviewed for War Wow. You've both got amazing jobs. I'm incredibly jealous. Svetlina, do you work solely for Blossom House or do you do other therapy work as well? No, I only work for myself, yeah. I looked up Blossom House on the internet and it said that it was specifically for women or mothers. Why is that? Um, because I've worked uh, over the years with men and women um, and uh, I have identified that I worked very, very well with women, particularly with mothers. And I've become interested in um, things that are all around giving birth, becoming a mother, um, dealing with things like guilt, mother's guilt, um, work-life balance and things like that. And uh, so that's what I've decided to concentrate on. You use different sorts of therapies. What do you use? Well, I could call myself an um, integrative therapist. Um, I started out as a hypnotherapist and I have sort of evolved over the years and incorporated other things um, to the way that I work. And uh, I find that it makes it rich and it helps me to adapt to each person's needs. I'm very fond of Gestalt, I'm very fond of uh, transactional analysis and, and uh, these are things that, you know, I find work very, very well. How many clients would you normally have? Well, I work part-time because I'm a mother myself and so I work around my children. Um, so I feel, I feel my days, um, you know, my, the school hours of my days. Claire, you met Svetlina at a networking event for women. Do you go to these networking events as yourself or as a solicitor who works for Blake Morgan? I go as Claire Colbert, solicitor at Blake Morgan. Um, as a family lawyer, it's really important that people get to know who I am because people instruct the personality of the person that they trust because it's such an emotive issue and emotive subject that they need to know that the person they're recommending someone to, that they love or they care about, they trust the person that you're, they're sending them on to. Presumably the law has changed quite a lot over the years, but the emotive side of divorce, has that stayed the same? Pretty much. It's still as upsetting and as traumatic an experience as I'm sure it was 10, 20, 30 years ago. And that's probably the hardest bit to deal with in my job. Um, the, the legal issues I can deal with inside out and I know without really trying anymore. But people's reactions to that and how they cope with the breakdown of their marriage or the difficulties they're having in their relationship can be immensely different person to person. In what ways is it more important to have a solicitor handling a divorce than doing it yourself? Because you're in a very different personal situation with somebody that you've been in a relationship or married to it can be very easy to slip into the habit or the emotive language that you've done in the past during the marriage and if that relationship is broken down then communication is probably at its worst and that's where a solicitor can perhaps take out some of that emotion in letters or emails that are going backwards and forwards and perhaps just give you a realistic sense of what's a good outcome for you what's a likely outcome instead of just battling on and causing more upset. You represent men and women about equally. Are there specific differences between the genders or are they much the same? It's more about personality actually. I have some women that react in the same way as some men and others that react in a very different way just in the way that they deal with the relationship breakdown and the practical issues. Some people are very logical and want to know exactly the facts of the law and how it's going to apply. Other people use me as a bounce ball for ideas and, and, and wanting to just talk it through a bit because some people just aren't ready yet either, where how they might react at the start of the relationship breakdown requires me to just be there to listen and to give options, whereas three, four months later, they want me to actually take legal steps for them. How long does it take to get divorced, or is that a bit like asking how long is a piece of string? The divorce bit's the easy bit. That's quite a, a paperwork exercise, and you're probably talking three to six months. The difficult bit is the arrangements for the children or the financial consequences of the breakdown of a marriage or, or a relationship. That can take a lot longer. There are a lot of myths about marriage, including common law marriage. Yeah, there's one really frustrating one that any family lawyer you talk to will say drives them mad. Most surveys and questionnaires you see now have a box that say, are you married, are you single, or are you common law? And common law is normally defined as living together for a period of five, six, seven years. And people seem to think that gives them a legal status and a legal right, which unfortunately it doesn't. 
So you're either married or you're not. It doesn't matter how long you've lived together as to gaining any rights to the other person's assets or claims on the breakdown of that relationship. And that can be very difficult if somebody's coming in presuming that they've got a specific status and a legal status that's going to help them and their children move on with a new life after the separation. And it's not, unfortunately. Is that the same as the myths around pre-NOP agreements not being worth the paper they're written on? The reason for the confusion is they probably weren't worth the paper they were written on 10 years ago. Um, as time is going on, judges are using them more and more as evidence of people's intent and one of the factors they'll look at when they're deciding how assets should be divided. The Law Commission's prepared a report this year that said prenuptial agreements should be binding in the future and so the law might change in the, the very near future as long as certain criteria have been met, which includes full financial disclosure, plenty of time between the wedding and entering into the agreement so there's no duress, both parties having solicitors to make sure they understand what they're signing up to and it being fair. And if those particular criteria have all been complied with, then the judges are likely to follow that. We haven't got it yet, but watch this space. Finally, to ask your own questions, Svetlina. Why is it worth putting myself through therapy? The cost, the time, potentially opening cans of worms. Is it not best just to get on with life and move forward? Well, if you're happy, it's worth it. Absolutely. Um, I think a lot of people are scared of, of therapy. There is still a very heavy stigma attached to therapy. Unfortunately, it stops people from going into it and taking that step when they might really benefit from it. It's a tremendous journey that people go through. And it's not always all tears. It's not always all pain. It's also about discovering who you are and building skills so that you can live a better life. So if you're happy and everything is, you know, hunky-dory in your life, then great. You know, by all means, go and live it. But if you're not living, if you're not happy in your life, if you feel that you're not in a space where you can be entirely yourself, then it's worth it all the way. Claire, you wanted me to ask what legal difference there is to a couple if they get married? It's huge. If you're not married, your rights are purely based upon the legal ownership of your assets, who put what in, how you've registered it, exactly what you've defined, what you've discussed and what you've agreed. If you are married, from the day you're married, the court have got the power to divide your assets in your sole name, in your joint names, assets you've inherited, in whatever way they think is appropriate, using a, a, a list which includes looking at your ages, your needs, if either of you got any particular physical disabilities, looking at what they consider to be the appropriate distribution of assets. Now that's very different from looking at the black and white picture of who put what in to decide how we divide things. Claire, Svetlina, thank you both very much again for coming and being interviewed for Well, Wow.